Welcome to Office 2010 Video Project 31. Hey, we're still talking about Excel, and in this video, last couple videos we've been talking about number formatting, and here we're going to look a little bit more at time number formatting. Now, we've already seen that when you enter a time in Excel, you have to separate the hour, minutes, and seconds with a colon and put AM or PM. Um, but underneath that number, we saw, uh, underneath that um, time, which is a formatted number. Underneath there, there's a proportion of one 24-hour day. So if I control 1 and apply the general number format, see time number format, if I click general, we can see it's 0.33333. Now we've already talked about this uh, in an earlier video. Here, What we want to see here is how to build a little template, two different templates for payroll. Now here we have the name, the wage, the time in, the time out. We're going to calculate hours worked and then we're going to do the gross pay, which will be wage time hours worked. And then we'll do a slightly different uh, payroll template down here. Just as we saw with dates and times in earlier videos, it's if you're trying to figure out the difference between uh, times or dates for that matter, it's always the later date minus the earlier date, or in this case, later time minus the earlier time. So I'm going to do my formula equals the later time minus the earlier time. Now what does that give me? Control enter. That formula, those cell references suck that formatting there. I don't really want to see that so I'm going to control one and apply general. Now I'm going to click escape. We already learned a keyboard shortcut to apply general. It's control shift tilde. Control shift tilde. And there it is. That's how uh, long we've worked. But it's a decimal which represents the proportion of one 24 hour day. So I'm going to hit F2. We need to multiply that if that's the proportion of a 24 hour day. To get it back up to 24 hours, you have to multiply it by 24. Ooh, but I just made a terrible error there. What is it? order of operations. I actually want to do this subtraction before this multiplying, so no way I have to force the issue with parentheses. Control Enter, double click and send it down. So now I have the hours worked. Now, uh, ew, gross pay is just a matter of equals the hours worked times the actual wage. But wait a second. We're multiplying or dividing decimals, in our case dividing. So what do we have to do? We have to use the round function because we need this gross pay represented as uh, whole pennies. So we're going to put the round function, comma, and then the number of digits. We've talked about this a few times. If we're, there's the decimal, one, two is the penny. I need to put the number two here. Control Enter. I'm going to apply a formatting. I can either come up here and apply currency, but I'm going to click Escape. Watch this, Control Shift 4. And you can see up here that it'll change from General, Control Shift 4, to Currency. That way I can copy the formula and the currency down. Now, our rule was required to round, we are, because we're using money. Uh, multiplying or dividing decimals, we are, and using it in a subsequent calculation. Now, in this particular example right here, I'm not adding or anything. I could come over here, but anytime you do a payroll table like this, you eventually probably will have to add for summary statistics. So I'm going to click right here and do Alt equals. The fact that we are using a subsequent formula makes it mandatory that we use the round function. And I can put something like total here. Now let's look at another example. There's a couple other situations that you get in uh, when you're doing time. Oh, people take lunch, and usually you're not paid for lunch. So we have a time in, a time out, and then another time in, time out. How in the world do you imagine we could do that? Well, if this is later time minus earlier time, and this one is also later time minus earlier time, we could just add them. There's a couple ways we could build this formula. I'm going to do equals, and I'm going to use the sum function. We haven't seen this so far. We've always used ranges, but you're allowed to put um, multiple items into the sum function separated by commas. Now, the first one we have to go this minus this, so I'm going to go this minus this. 
That'll give me, and watch this, here's a great trick when you're uh, building a formula and want to see halfway through the formula what it's going to evaluate to. That right there, if I hit the F9 key, it evaluates it. Oh, there's the hours worked for the morning uh, before lunch. But you immediately got to control Z, undo. You don't want to hard code that in. All right, that's the first one, comma, and then the second one, this minus this. And we don't have to put parentheses around that because that comma, everything will calculate there before it moves on to the second uh, comma. We could do our little trick there. F, F9 evaluates. Oh, it looks like they work the exact amount on either side of the lunch. Control Z. All right, and now the sum will add those two. We could actually check it right or check it right now and it'll give us a proportion. Control Enter. I'm immediately going to apply the general format with control shift tilde ah 0.33 so 8 hours and we can clearly see 4 and 4 so that's 8 that is correct control um, F2 to put it in edit mode and what do we need to do well if it's already a proportion of 24 hour days we 20 proportion of one 24 hour day we need to push it back up to hours so we multiply by 24 control enter control shift tilde every single time you enter it it resucks the format and then double click and send it down. All right, so we have our hours. Just out of curiosity, we used the sum. We did we went like this. We just took uh the before lunch and after lunch time and added them. You could do it a different way like this. You just have to make sure that and actually you don't even need these parentheses right here. You just got to make sure make sure that boom boom that all is in parentheses and then multiplied by 24 I kinda like the uh, simplicity of the sum function alt equals do comma do alright and then now we have gross and we are gonna do our round function equals round notice once you get the hang of it if you're doing payroll all the time you're just oh yeah I have to round so I'm just gonna use the round and build the formula right in this argument I'm gonna say hours worked times the wage comma two because we have pennies control enter double click and send it down alright so we saw calculating hours work calculating a gross for a payroll table we saw how to do it with with a lunch period right in there. By the way, if it was um, everyone had the same lunch period, which they don't here, you could you wouldn't have to be as elaborate. You could just do the initial time in, time out, and if it was one hour, everyone had one hour, you just subtract one divided by 24, for example, whatever that decimal is. Uh, there's one other situation that people run into. What if someone works a night shift? Right, so it starts at 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. Now the formula for that is something we cover in an advanced Excel class, but if you want to come here and look at it, you can uh, look at that. There's also a video at YouTube you can search that's uh, uh, time, uh, night shift Excel time math. That would find the video. All right, uh, that was a bunch about time number formatting, payroll calculations. See you next video.